My name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the skimmer style slipper of my quilted slippers pattern. This pattern comes in a wide range of sizes from a US women's four to about a US men's 14 and a half. The pattern also comes in two styles, a booty style, which I already have a video for. I'll put a link up here. And this skimmer style. The skimmer style has a seam at the heel and a heel tab and a lower profile. This is really a pretty easy slipper to sew. I think it's a little bit easier than the booty and it's so cute. The pair that I'm sewing today is a bit of a variation and a bit of an experiment. I used two layers of batting and a really fluffy thick fleece for the lining. If you want to do the same thing and add more layers to your skimmers, I really recommend that you size up because once I got all those layers, they're really wasn't as much room for my feet and they're a little too tight for me. So I'm gonna have to make myself another pair and go up a size. Fortunately, there are a lot of sizes, but if you're gonna go and use like much thicker fabric, definitely consider going up a size. You can find the pattern in my shop and I will have a link to that down below. Let's get started. To start out, you'll want to reference the pattern for what fabric you need to cut out. For the pieces of fabric that you're going to quilt, you'll want to cut them out a little larger than your pattern piece and cut a piece of batting the same size. Then to make your quilt sandwich, lay the batting down on a flat work surface, smooth it out, and lay your fabric on top with the right side up. Smooth out the fabric and then pin the layers together with safety pins or long pins. When you use the pins, lift up the fabric with the pin just enough to get it through the fabric and batting. If you lift up the fabric, you might get more wrinkles and lumps in it, so it's best to leave it on the table as much as possible. Next, you're gonna quilt your sandwich with the quilting design of your choice. And I have a video about quilting your fabric that I'll link down in the show notes. After quilting, you'll use your pattern piece to cut the quilted fabric to size. Let's start by assembling the exterior of the slipper. Fold the skimmer side in half with the right sides together and pin along the center back seam. Now we're going to stitch the center back seam. then you can just gently press this open um, either with an iron very carefully or just with your fingers. Now we're going to stitch the outer body to the sole and I have marked with chalk the notches that are in the pattern and I need to match those up with my center back seam and the center front and to mark the center front you can just fold it in half and then I will just use a pin and pop that in there, or you could use a wash away marker or chalk. So one thing that's gonna help us is to clip a few notches right back here, and that will help us fit the fabric to the curve. We're not gonna be stretching it, we just need to shape it into the curve, and a few little notches will help us. So I like to use these tiny scissors, and you wanna clip only about a quarter of an inch, you wanna be really careful because we don't wanna go past our seam line. Now let's match our notches. Depending on the fabric you're using, it can be kind of hard to get pins through all the layers. I have like some really heavy fabric for the sole and two layers of batting on each, so these pins are struggling a little bit. Okay. Plus all this batting is making it really stiff, but we will do our best. So if you have clips, that might work better than pins. 
So you can see here our notches are opening up and just allowing this fabric to curve. Okay, now we're going to stitch all the way around. Now we'll sew around with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So the curved parts at the heel and the toe are the most challenging, but with these little clips, we can really get it nice and flat and you just will need to push down this excess fabric that's at the heel and make sure it's out of the way um, and try not to get any wrinkles here. If you do get some wrinkles right here, you can just ignore it. Or if you want it to be perfect, you could remove a few stitches and restitch. through four layers of batting and two layers of fabric and I think I have a 14 needle in here which really worked fine. Um, if you're having trouble getting through all those layers maybe check your needle and try a bigger one. Now we need to trim and clip the seam allowance around the edge of the sole and I find that my big scissors usually do a good job of this. You want to be careful that you don't cut through that stitching line and it is tricky. I try to kind of grade the seams down, but it's not always possible because the batting is quilted to the fabric, um, but you can just do your best. We're really trying to reduce the bulk so that when we turn it right side out, it'll be nice and smooth. If we don't trim it down um, or clip the seams, we'll get kind of like, big wrinkles all around here. So the other thing I do is I'll kind of fold it and cut out some little triangle notches. And again, be super careful. It's really hard to cut through all the layers, um, but those notches are gonna help give it a smoother turn. Um, with this curved edge, you know, um, we're forcing this extra fabric into a smaller curved edge. So trimming it away will help it be flat. So we just take out this, these little extra bits and it gives more room for that seam allowance to hang out in there. Next, we're going to assemble the lining. And we're really doing this the same way that we assembled the exterior of the slipper. First, you'll want to stitch the center back seam of the skimmer side. We'll pin the side to the sole. And then when we stitch it, we'll leave an opening of about three to four inches. After we stitch the lining to the exterior, we'll turn the slipper right side out through this opening. To make the heel tab, you'll stitch along one long side and then you want to turn it right side out. So I put a safety pin in one end and we'll stick it through the tube and then you want to give it a little help to just start turning it right side out. It's pretty tiny so it won't take very long, but turning tubes can be a little bit fiddly. You want to be careful and we just gently pull that right side out, remove the safety pin, get those raw ends out, and then you can press it flat. So you just want to take this and fold it with the seam on the inside. And then I'm going to pin it to the center back seam and baste it in place. Here I have my slipper with the wrong side out and my lining has the right side out and I'm gonna stitch them together. So I want them right sides together and I'll just stick the lining inside my slipper. So I like to start by aligning my center back seam 
And then you can just pin all the way around. It might also be helpful to mark the center front on your lining and match it to the center front of your slipper. Okay, now we can stitch all the way around. To stitch this, we're going to hold the slipper kind of like a loop and rotate it around as we stitch. I find that this is generally easier than trying to fit the slipper on to the bed. And I can remove this drawer and slip my fabric over this, but generally I find that it's easier just to keep the fabric on top. Okay, that was a little challenging to do because this furry fleece is just really weird. I can't see the stitches in it. And I have two layers of batting, so it's really thick. But I managed to get around it. Um, just take it slow. I actually, looking at this, I think I wanna go back and restitch this part because I think my seam allowance was really off. So. I'm gonna try doing it from this angle. I think with all the layers, it's just getting like really, it's just really stiff. So let's do it again. <laughs> I did not maintain a good seam allowance, so I'm gonna do it again from this side. Okay, that's a much better seam allowance now. Nothing wrong with having to go back and redo it. Um, definitely one of the tricky parts of having extra layers of batting and a thick lining is that it gets more difficult to sew, but it's gonna be extra cozy, so I think it's worth it. Okay, now we just wanna trim down the seam allowance and clip into the curve a little bit. Okay, now that we have it trimmed, we can turn it right side out. So just pull your slipper through that opening in the lining. And then you just want to push. My gosh, this fabric is so soft. I'm really looking forward to this. Okay, and you just want to push out the slipper. Now is the time if it looks like you need to trim the seam allowances or clip the curves anymore, do it now because our next step is to close up the hole. Also, if you feel like it, you can top stitch this down, just top stitch along the edge. Um, I usually don't top stitch it. And I think especially with this furry lining, I'm not going to top stitch because I like how it looks. I kind of like how it's peeking out. So to close up this hole, just pull your lining out and you want to tuck in those raw edges and pin them together. And then you can use your machine and just stitch right along the edge. That totally works. Or you can do it by hand. Then you'll stuff your lining back inside the slipper and you're all done. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. This video is part of an email sew along that gives a lot of extra tips and tricks and tutorials for making the booty and the skimmer slippers. It's a six email series. And if you are interested, there's a link to sign up down in the show notes. You can sign up at any time. Again, if you need the pattern, it's in my shop and there's a link down in the show notes. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy sewing.